Hi, I'm Katharina Lorenz and I'm a classicist. Well, a classicist is someone who deals with the classical world or classical antiquity. And probably the next question would be, so what's that? And that's basically what we uh, refer to, or what we, what we call Greek and Roman antiquity, Greek and Roman cultures. So basically everything which happened between roughly 2000 before Christ up until about 500 after Christ around the Mediterranean in, in Greece and in Italy. It's kind of a, a super vast thing actually, 2500 years and, and not just literature or art or something, history, everything. So a lot of stuff. And I personally am very interested in art and, um, and pictures in particular. I mean, art is perhaps kind of a, a problematic term when you look at antiquity because they didn't really have this understanding of art we have. So they didn't have, you know, not necessarily art galleries. So it's not just stuff which is there because it looks good, but things which also had some sort of kind of practical function. I'm interested in pictures and in particular um, mythological pictures and how they, they are used in, order, in all sorts of contexts in order to, to, to convey certain messages. Yeah, mythological pictures are, well, pictures depicting mythological stories. And myth, obviously, is, is kind of, I don't know, the ancient answer to soap operas? I'm not sure. Well, you get all sorts of things. I mean, you don't really get canvases. That's something which doesn't really exist in antiquity. So you get things on pots, for instance, so clay, pottery, you know. The Greeks were very good at painting pottery, so their mythological stories tend to be on pottery. You get them on buildings and stone, so sculpture essentially, like the Elgin marbles for instance. Well, they're not mythological, but obviously the, the pediments which belong to that as well, to the temple, they are mythological, so you get that there. And the, the, the one thing I'm particularly interested in is wall painting, frescoes, in, in Roman houses, in, in, in especially in Pompeii, which is one of the very few places where we actually have ancient wall painting because of the, the way that the, the city was destroyed, so that was all protected. Basically, I'm looking at wall painting and you know people's, people's interior decoration and um, try to find out what was interesting for them, or why they wanted to have mythological pictures in their houses, and they were very, very popular, so lots of stuff on, on walls. And then also try to find out whether there were any differences in the way they used them, I mean, the, the, the classic thing, me being the, the, the classic, classic scholar, is writing books and articles and get them out in the open. But obviously I'm aware that only very few people will, will read these, unfortunately. But anyway, so, so one of the things is this is kind of like the academic kind of way of, of, of getting, getting, the classic academic way of getting uh, things across. But then I've, 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 over the last couple of years, I've become a bit more adventurous in doing things. Something I prepared earlier here is that's kind of an, an old school technology. Uh, it's, a, it's a video of, of, of 3D reconstructions of Pompeian houses. So I've, I've, I've looked into those things and uh, the ways in which we can use modern technologies in order to show people who wouldn't read a book like this uh, what's actually going on in places like Pompeii and what's interesting about it as well. And we did a website on a place called Nemi which is um, in Italy, very close to Rome. Beautiful, you can see beautiful place on a lake. And Nami is very famous because it has a, um, a very important sanctuary for Diana. And it is also very interesting because it has a direct relevance to, to Nottingham, weirdly enough, because the chap who first excavated it was from, from the area. Here, here's the, the sanctuary back there on the lake, and the chap who excavated it was from Nottingham, and when he died, he gave all the stuff he found to the museum here. Um, and unfortunately, they don't, they don't have it on display, so it's all hidden. So we thought we need to find something to make it kind of more available to people and to get people kind of engaged with it. I mean, one of the, the, one of the classic things people approach you with is, uh, oh, yeah, it looks nice, you know. So as you said, what's the point of, you know, asking any more questions about it? It's nice, you know. And, and there certainly is kind of, there's a long history of people talking about art and ancient art in particular, which is pretty much just say, to say, oh, yeah, hey, a beautiful picture oh, that was great what they did back there in Pompeii. Let's copy it for our house. You know, when you look to, through some of the English country houses, they, you know, have Pompeian walls. Um, but they probably just did it because they thought it, it, it looked good. And lots of scholars have done that as well. But I think that's only one part of the story. And I think the interesting thing is during the 20th century, we've, I think, well, across the whole of, of, of the arts, but especially in, in, in classics, we made lots of advances in thinking a bit more critically about the culture we look at. It's important to preserve this stuff because it's, it's, it's an enormously interesting kind of utterance of culture which happened a long time ago. 
and it's very, very, very endangered. So Pompeii, 20 years on, I think there won't be anything left on those worlds. So I think one of, one of the things where I see my work is quite important is actually in preserving our knowledge about it. But then the other thing is, which, uh, which is perhaps a bit more relevant for, for everyone, is, is, uh, is that looking at you know, things like houses, for instance, trying to understand the, the rationale behind people you know, choosing different decorations, and also thinking about what that then does to, to the life happening within these worlds, that has a clear relevance for, for today. Because it's about trying to figure out how we react to, to our visual environment, how we react to, to visual, visual things around us, why we make certain choices. And lots of the things I found out about Pompeian houses, they have an immediate relevance uh, for today as well, thinking about you know, people structuring areas and, and so on. By doing this and by trying to figure out how these houses work, and there's lots of, lots of stuff missing, so I have to fill in lots of gaps and I have to kind of you know, try to find ways of how I fill these gaps. Um, I have to be very precise um, about the methods I use uh, analyzing this, this stuff, both in terms of the technologies probably I use to, to, to kind of to document it and, and then show it to other people, but also um, uh, with, with a view to the analytical methods I use. So I have to be very precise about my, my visual analysis.